Hey guys, today I'm going to make a compelling argument why Alex Bracini needs to be banned for life. Alex's background is well known, a simple Google search or watching one of my previous videos will show you that he has been caught multiple times on camera. He's been banned two times for cheating. And after the second ban, he got into a art altercation with marked cards. At that time, he wasn't accused of cheating, but it's interesting. So why is he still allowed to play? Why is he sponsored? So recently, he has obtained his bronze sponsorship. So Wizards of the Coast is officially paying him to play regular players. And here he is on the right with his girlfriend, Rachel, and Rudy. And I showed his image to go over why cheating is so popular in magic. It's, it's a history of magic. And Meryl will admit, Mark Rosewater wants to put Mike Long, a notorious cheater, into the Hall of Fame. Because he is, quote, a villain. Now, this mentality of who deserves to play magic, there are currently 44 players banned from magic. MTG headquarters, Unsleeved Media is one of them. Alex Pacini, someone caught multiple times on camera. All right, I love this story. I always tell my employees the story of an old man. He owns a grocery store. The grocery store has been in business for 40 years. He hires someone as a cash, you know, as to work the cash register. And 10 years later, he finds that she's stealing money. He catches her stealing money. Well, he asks his wife, what should I do? The wife says, you must fire her because this is not the first time you caught her stealing, but it's not the first time she stole from you. In Alex's case, imagine that we are a business owner. We own a grocery store. We hire Alex. He steals from us. And what he's doing is no different than stealing from the magic community. When he wins power nine, when he wins $10,000, He's stealing that from the prize pool. When he goes to a GP in top eights, he's stealing that from someone. And it might not be as obvious as who's in ninth place. Because if he cheated you round one and you're 0-1, your whole lineup is done. Like, so much of magic is decks. My deck is good against this deck, but it's not good against that deck. There is randomness. So by cheating his way, he is manipulating the rest of the player base. The entire bracket changes every time he cheats. So every time he wins, when he's supposed to lose, the entire bracket will change. Now back to the story. So let's say we hire Alex to work at our grocery store. We catch him stealing. Then we catch him on camera stealing. Then we catch him on camera stealing again. And... After a while, we call the cops and put him in jail for a year. He gets out of jail for a year. And for whatever reason, we hire him again. Because we believe in giving people second chances. Well, he does the exact same thing that he did previously. He got caught on camera stealing. We catch him stealing multiple times. And we call the cops again. He gets put in jail for another year. Why would we hire him a third time for our grocery store? Would anyone, would anyone in their reasonable mind hire a guy who's been put in jail two times from stealing from your store to your store again? And the answer is we wouldn't. Uh, any logical human being would not. But Wizard of Coast is more... They are more upset at Unsleeved Media, Jeremy, for political beliefs and memes and Pepe Frogs than they are at someone stealing from their player base. This is what's happening. Now, another story I want to recount, and this is an old school story. A lot of you don't remember this. Mark Justice, uh, Mike Long was the best Magic player at the time. He was a notorious cheater, caught multiple times, and... Mark Justice said, the only way I can beat Mike Long 
is if I cheat better than he does. That was an actual statement. And there's a very famous incident with both of them where Mike Long knocks off Mark Justice's dice, a Mark Justice knocks off his dice, and they're both changing, manipulating life totals in a very close game. So they go from one life to five life to 20, like 19 life to 20 life. And the judge has to figure out which of them cheated, and the answer is both of them, but he sides with Mike Long. And Mark Justice is like, all right, that's fair. You got me this time, but I'm going to cheat you the next time. And Mike Long's like, yep, all right, I owe you one. That was the culture of magic. This is what Mark Rosewater remembers so fondly. So Alex Pacini, to Mark Rosewater, he's his hero, right? He's the villain that magic needs. Because imagine Star City Games. Oh, they catch Alex cheating, they gave him the power nine already, but the ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar check. Let's donate it to charity. Let's get lots of likes on Reddit. Let's get our name out there. What does Star City Games lose? So there is a loser in this. It's a magic community. It's the people who paid their entry fee to win a prize to put in it in the prize pool. It would be like the World Series of Poker. I think the top winner wins eight million dollars, and. The winner gets caught cheating using, I don't know what. Instead of giving the $8.2 million to the player base that paid, that they pay their entry fee of $10,000 to enter, or refunding some type of money, they said, you know what, it's impossible for us to determine a winner. So what we're going to do is we're going to donate to a charity of Reddit's choice. Of course, they're going to get amazing PR. And I think that's why they do it. Because every time... Something bad with Alex happens, they actually get way better PR than if something good happened with Alex. So, back to Mike Long and Mark Justice. That is the era I grew up in. And I can tell you, not much has changed. There was a deck back then in Mirage called Prosperity Bloom, it was the first combo deck of its type. People would put cards in lap. So the probability of comboing off turn one or two is probably around 20-25% with that deck. Well, in a GP, it's 90-95% because everyone has cards in lap. Which means they put the they slip the fourth prosperity bloom or the carnivorous bloom. The prosperity is actually a combo piece in blue. Or maybe they take one of the pieces. They probably change it up once in a while. And then it's in their lap. And then when they need it, they pull it from their lap. And you might be like, hmm, that's probably a really very antiquated thing. No one would try that now. Marcellius Carnivore. He tried the Hornet Queen in lap trick. And the deck Amulet Bloom in Modern, which was banned, had such a high winning rate, but probability-wise... It's not supposed to win at that rate. It wins at the same 20 to 25% turn 1, 2, and 3. But un- with uh, Jared, I don't forget, was it Jared? I mean, there's a bunch of cheaters, right? There's so many of them to name. Trevor Humphreys, Jared Bocelli. I mean, there's a bazillion of them. Uh, one of those two used the same cheat that was used by Mike Long all those years ago. They didn't advance to cheat. It's the same thing, but instead of Prosperity Bloom, the deck was called Amulet Bloom now in Modern, and it dominated Modern, although probability-wise, it... So, let me mention Alex Alexander Haynes. He's a Canadian. He won a GP with the deck called Miracles. I'm not accusing him of cheating, because I don't know. But Miracles Magic is meant to be... Magic favors cheaters, and that is the number one deck. When I look at it and I say... Oh my gosh, imagine all the cheating going on with Miracles because you need to know what's on the top of your deck. And if somehow you can manipulate the top of your deck and know what's on it, you're going to win. Terminus for one, good. GG. And treat the angels when you need to, when you are when you have, you know, seven land untapped. Oh man, that's GG. Like, the problem is very simple. And what's the solution? Don't play competitive magic. Do you want to be cheated? 
I guarantee you in every GP, there's at least 10% of those people cheating, and they're mostly Magic Pros. I guarantee it to you, because just like Mark Justice to- told Mike Long all those years ago, the only way I can beat you, Alex Pacini, well, Mark Justice said, the only way I can beat you, Mike Long, is if I cheat better than you. The only way you can beat Alex Pacini is if you cheat better than he does. And so far, he's unbeatable. I mean, they banned everyone. I don't know where Jared went. I don't know where Trevor Humphreys went. I don't know. Where did all these people go? They'll be back with more. Like It's kind of like those uh, American Got Talent shows where, oh, good cheat, good magic trick. And then they come back next week with an even better magic trick because <laughs> they've been practicing. That, that's the same way I feel with uh, what's going on with Alex. And I'm uh, it's not surprising to me that uh, his girlfriend, Rachel, is everywhere in Magic. She is probably one of the most f- famous female Magic, I, I put players in brackets, in quotations, players. And yeah, so they are a power couple in Magic, just like Frank and Melissa, Melissa De Toro. We know how that ended up very poorly. So anyway... Man, this guy is just invincible, isn't he? He's, I mean, man, it's, it's crazy that, like, it's crazy someone who posts his memes is banned for life, and this guy, like, again, it's a scenario. He's stealing from the magic community time and time again. And he gets caught time and time again. Yet no one seems to care. Like, no one. Like, I would expect pro magic players who are not cheating to care the most. But assuming that all of them are cheating, then they shouldn't care because, like, nothing has changed. Prosperity Bloom became Amulet Bloom. Mike Long and Mark Justice became Alex Bruccini and enter Magic Pro here. Jared, Trevor, just, just so many of them. And you look at the decks, right? You look at Miracles, you look, I mean, that's a deck meant to use sleight of hand. That's a very, very potent deck if you can put the card that you need on top of your library all the time. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.